Hello everyone, in this episode I will expand upon the idea of node input and output and as we spoke in previous episodes. Now, the idea here uh, originally in my uh, R&D was that outputs would have this, uh, you know, public inline value, value. Okay, but this by itself has a very big overhead per slot and very soon you will find yourself full of junk on each node that you don't really need. Already, already, I have this metadata list that is dealing with that much overhead and I'm really hating it. So I'm trying to get rid of it. Uh, at least in chapter two, I will think about something for it. But here is the thing. If I can, I want to have different types of values here as input and output slots. So for that, I will open my infrastructure inline value just to have a reference and pin this. That's too much. Thank you. Inside IO, I will make a folder, I think, called inputs and another folder for uh, outputs. Now inputs, I will have a class that is called bool input slot. Then I will have, and I want, yeah, a class called uh, color input slot, and I will copy this guy. Was it Control Shift L? No, Control Alt L. Okay, and then uh, okay, I need a curve. So, curve input slot. I will have float. I don't have data type, don't forget that. So, float input slot. Then I have int input slot I will have a quaternion input slot I will have a rect input slot I will have no. What did I do? Why did I do that? Okay. Uh, a string input slot. Then I will have a vector two input slot. A vector three input slot and finally a vector four input slot and close all documents now on outputs I will have equivalent of these as outputs so bool output slot color output slot and curve output slot load output slot and int output slot 
quaternion output slot then rect output slot string output slot and vector to output slot vector 3 output slot vector 4 output slot so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 there we go now that I have all of these uh, I need to say that hey input slot is uh, extended from node input and copy it and basically I will paste it to every one of them and outputs basically are node output There we go. Now, because each node, uh, uh, was it the output? No, inputs. Inputs are having their validation, okay? So I will have this public uh, override, and you see that is valid connection is there, okay? So I will copy this and paste it in each one of these methods. There we go. Okay. Now, uh, let me think. Uh, okay, I was thinking about something else, but these guys, however, will have a public bool value, and of course, it will change. So. This one will be color. Yeah, import. This one will be animation curve. So, animation curve. This guy will be float. This guy will be int uh, quaternion rect string a vector 2 Uh, vector 3 no not output slot the vector 3 yep and 
finally a vector for. There we go. Okay. So now we have slots and here, for example, the Boolean returns if active output is um, bool output slot or active output is um, int output slot or active output is um, float uh, output slot. Uh, I don't think any one of the other ones can be converted to uh, boolean, for example, color, curve, a quaternion, rect, a string, yeah, it can, so, or active output is string output slot. Uh, vector to vector to, you know, the others are not, okay? And the uh, color returns if the active output is, of course, color, if I find it, color output slot or. Now, we go for every vector for based. So if active output is quaternion output slot or active output is a vector for output slot or active output is a rect output slot. I don't see myself using any one of them other than these for converting something to a color, okay? Now, <clears throat> after that, curve input slot well, it only accepts an animation curve. So if active output is uh, a curve output slot, if I find it, uh, curve output slot, that's the only thing we accept for a curve. The float is almost exact as the Boolean. These are interestingly convertible to each other yeah same for int quaternion is just like color so we only accept uh, vector for based stuff rect is Again, a vector for base stuff. Um, and vector for, of course, is a vector for base stuff. Okay? Now, remaining is a string, vector two and vector three. String. Now, this is a dilemma. For a string, I can accept a vector for base stuff or non-vector for based stuff like this, but I can't accept an animation curve, okay? There. Boom. Um, let's break this line to two so that it can be read better, okay. So, yeah, for vector two. Now, here is the thing. It's completely now uh, design based. Of course, we will accept if is a vector two output slot. But should I accept a vector three and vector four and uh, drop the other stuff? No. That's my decision. 
you can change it however you want vector 3 again I will only accept a vector 3 output uh, because uh, if I accept a vector 2 then I need to set the z, uh, z to 0 and I don't want to deal with that and uh, now I'm thinking about something else right now for example I can do this instead of a node input I will have an int input slot and for the output I will have an int output slot now here I can say curve input slot and again uh, curve output slot okay same I need to do these guys here now no the schema is okay so if I build it now go back to unity these guy will be yelling at me right now no they, they were old okay so test and test now remember the first one we added is curve the second one is int so if I want to assign a curve to an int nothing happens but I can assign an int to an int also if I want to assign an int to a curve I can't but I can assign a curve to a curve okay and that's basically what I was after now I'm debating something uh, and that comes to the input slots should I calculate the values on inputs I mean Hmm. should these guys have equivalent of the booleans and stuff like that and I calculate it based on what I get I think so uh, so um, I will have a method in input that says public virtual now this can be void this can be returning a boolean I will return a boolean and I will say calculate value and that's it and by default it returns again true meaning that we could have we, we could calculate our value okay now when I'm gonna make this I will say public virtual not virtual not override and calculate value okay I don't want this and why are you adding it again stupid thing okay now here um wait should i nah i don't need to return anything i will make it void because we already made sure that our connections are valid so there is no reason for that void now here we say uh, if i if our relate uh, no wait if our connection node hmm I'm totally lost now it's a list of nodes 
Ouch. Yeah. Connection node zero is a bool output slot. So if the connection node equals to null or connection node that count equals to zero, then return. Then if that's the case, Then we want a bool value here. So we say public bool value. And here we say value equals to convert to bool our disguise value. Dot. Oh, heck. No, 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 no. Okay, I, I, no, no, no. That will be awfully, awfully uh, wrong way of doing this. Awfully wrong way of doing this. So forget about that. Okay? The inputs just validate themselves and keep the connections. That's all to it. Okay? Um, I will come back here, however, and add some methods to get the values later, I think. Or am I ready to do that here? Um, let me take a look at my notes. Uh, where is the other one? Here. Here. And uh, here, bear with me for a minute until I take a look at my notes. Come on, Visual Studio, you can do it. Come on, buddy. Arr. There we go. So on this guy, ask key, remove key, and that's it. That's really it. Ah, oh, that's a schema. Okay. And there. Yeah, I have tons of things here. So how am I doing this in here? Let's see, base, not base, math, add node. Huh, really? Ouch. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh, oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Um, none of them. Uh, 
Okay. I don't have anything ready for time being. I I was looking in my notes and it seems that the last iteration I deleted some stuff. And unfortunately, I don't think I kept other iterations there. That would be really derpy of me. But I think I deleted them already. Yeah, I should have deleted the rest. Ah, that's a very bad thing to do, but I am done. I know, I know. Yeah, I, uh, okay, okay. I have to watch some videos myself from my YouTube channel, apparently. Me. Anyway, uh, the idea was that I was thinking if I should somehow calculate the, uh, the values on inputs inside the slot themselves. Well, here's the thing, each input has like uh, a connection and a connection node list, okay? But it's not the job of the input of calculating the values, honestly. It's the job of the node itself to calculate them and use the connection whatsoever. Anyway, uh, right now, trust me, our system is finished. Really, 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 really. Yeah. Our system is finally ready to be used. Uh, I may add, uh, I may come back and add that calculate value here somewhere, sometime. But right now, uh, my system is ready. There are still things to need to be added to the base. I know, uh, first of all, the tick graph and reset graph, okay? The next thing that I need to add is that if you look at the graph, I didn't add something here that I need to add later on. And that is the usage of an interface. And I don't think I don't, I have that interface. Yeah, I have the I copy. Okay. So, uh, comma, I copy of the type graph. And that dictates me to have a method that says copy, okay? And I'm not doing it in this chapter because I don't have any way of showing you the problem that we will come face to face if we don't do this copy, if we don't do this deep copy stuff. And deep copy means that now we need to have uh, that deep copy inside the node, inside the IO slots, blah 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 but and by the way if you want to you can return that flag to true okay so um yeah anyway and i have that here too base node node base whatever you know the schema yeah right now i think it's a very good point to end the chapter one and I assure you, the thing that I am giving you at the end of the chapter one, uh, chapter one right now here is a fully functional system that you can use to develop your own behavior trees, your own graph editors for dialogue trees, for example. If you so desire to have a separate system beside dialogue tree for quest tree, you can use it. Uh, for example, if you ever played Skyrim, in Skyrim you have this, uh, let me see if I have an, an image of that, hopefully. Well, I didn't have the image, but I found some images online. This is Skyrim, and these are your skills. As you see, they are very close to a node graph, okay? And when you choose a, uh, one of the nodes, you see its uh, requirements and what it, it does and its effect. And this is another one. I'm not sure if it's a Skyrim or not or whatever. 
But again, you see that you can easily present this in back end on your computer when you're developing the game as node graph and then the GUI can easily read that graph and draw the GUI. Okay? And of course, uh, this is the graph and this is the description about the graph. This is the description about the node itself and of course the node has a level and the required level. Okay? So it has an effect, it has a description, a level, and required level. Uh, this is the character level by, uh, this is, sorry, the skill level by the way. Uh, okay? So uh, we will dive into something like this later, much, much later on. But the system that I gave you right now is capable of doing any type of graph that can be represented by a node tree. Okay? So, for example, uh, this is another one that is again a Skyrim, but uh, the guy is modified it. So uh, you can see that it's smithing and it's completely modified graph there. This is because Skyrim is open for modders and the modding community do wonders, as you see, about these. Ah, come on, blocked. Okay, do wonders about these uh, graphs, as you see. They can do tons of things here, okay? And, uh, well, long story short, this is the chapter one. Uh, the chapter two will be about behavior trees, and we will use this system to generate our very own behavior tree. And I encourage you to try make your own behavior tree before I start the chapter two. Uh, to get us started, I can direct you toward uh, an asset online for Unity and uh, let me remember the name. Was it? Yeah. Behavior, no, no, no. Behavior Designer. Okay. And it's an asset store. It has the forum, but here is the help. Uh, and the website, opsiv.com, assets, behavior designer. This is the documentation. So first of all, you can take a look. Again, it's a node graph system, a description and uh, videos that you can watch about this asset and documentation that goes through every node. Uh, for time being, I highly encourage you to start generating the graph and go for the sequence and the selector node. And if you can make it happen, before I dive into this, I would be very, very happy and you would learn a lot by yourself. The only thing that you need to know about behavior trees, any behavior tree actually, is that the behavior tree is a special tree that starts from a start node, goes up, down, left to right. So that's the order. First, up, down, then left, right. So in this example, for example, this is the start node. It will run the selector. The selector will choose the, the leftmost node, run it first, then goes to the right one. And this node, because it has children, again goes to the left node and toward the right. Okay? So this is how you design your behavior trees. Uh, I get the help for my nodes uh, from Opsiv and some from behavior, behave2. Uh, behave is what Emil uh, Johansson developed. And let's talk about them later and compare these guys uh, to what I'm after and why it's so important that I'm designing my own system. But as you see, this is an overview of the behavior designer and it's uh, in a custom editor window. And that's exactly one of the reasons I didn't like this asset. It's a tad bit uh, busy, in, in a busy view, especially. Especially when you go for tasks and want to add tasks, you have to search about them. Anyway, long story short, my solution right now, where we are standing, is a very base, 
very good base that you can expand upon it okay and you can have your own system being generated based on these okay as you see for example i have a general and a math but i didn't do anything to these so i think uh, i won't visit these guys for a long time actually maybe never i will go to these uh, maybe in future if i have time but i decided that i want my behavior tree system to not sit inside these dlls i will separate that dll simply because well actually i have to add it here um debating no i think um yeah i need to, i need to put it inside node graph anyway anyway uh, because my node graph is especially here when i'm creating the graph pop-up i'm going for different types for example behavior tree and others yeah in on pop-up you see the tree type it's inside boss common um wait 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 well i i i will sit and figure if i want to put it inside the same dll or if i want to separate the dlls anyway uh long story short the second chapter will all be behavior trees until then have fun everyone and see you in chapter two bye bye